It is maybe a minute past six, and I'm going to call the regular select board meeting to order. Tonight is um, August the 15th, the Ides of August. Um, first up is to approve minutes from last time, which was August 1st. Could we have a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. Any comments, changes, adjustments? Over here. Oh, that's right. I just want to comment that you did a nice job summarizing my long rambling thing about um, about the budget and unexpected revenues. That was nicely summarized. If I could have read that, it would have been much more concise. <laughs> um, all right. So all in favor? I did watch it and understood it. So you did. Yeah. Yeah, but if you read this, it's a lot shorter, and it yeah. gets to the same yeah. point. Um, so, all in favor of approving the minutes as written, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries with one abstention who yes. wasn't here. Yes, absenteeism. Uh, next is set adjust agenda. Does anybody have any changes, additions, stuff? No. Nope. Oh boy, I sometimes going to remember for old business, but I didn't write it down. So. Um, it probably won't come to me. Put it in an old business. Yeah, but I don't remember what it is. <laughs> It'll come to you. It might. Write right. it down with I'll see if it does. All right, next is uh, we're going to roll with the agenda we have. Communication from the audience. Everybody's here for something. Um, next is town manager report. Sean Fielder, tell us about what's happening in your office. Okay, so um, coming off the last uh, select board meeting, I did do the update to uh, VTrans, FAST, and their um, engineering contractor, Summit Engineering, um, for the Creamery Road project that the intent is will maintain the railroad tracks. So um, uh, Summit Engineering actually has uh, already done some field work on that, and uh, actually Eric and I met with um, them, uh, uh, Doug, from the firm earlier this week, and they... Uh, we're at a point where we'll uh, get our design information. Sorry, I'm confusing projects. Let me step back. Um, they are working on developing the updated plan, and uh, we'll have that probably in the next four to six week period. So uh, things are progressing nicely there. Um, we do have a representative here with A&E, so just I'll hit this quick because it is one of the agenda items. Uh, we have the... Um, ongoing discussions with the Bridgman Reservoir Roof Project. So there's been a lot of communications between the town and the office with the uh, construction bid opening this last week. We'll hear more about that in a few minutes. Uh, we have uh, transitioning to the uh, Yellow Barn Project and there is a lot of continued positive activity on this. We have received from VTrans uh, what is known as a letter of intent. This is for uh, the uh, access uh, permit. It's basically a precursor to the access permit is how I would frame this. So that's a positive. What that is, uh, that's one thing that is needed for us um, as project planners to proceed with our own zoning department and get the application uh, rolling, if you will. We're figuring out the exact timing on that particular item. I'm talking about the town's zoning application. Um, that's not finalized, but we're going to review this this next week. Uh, I'm actually going to be communicating with Kristen in the office just to confirm with her uh, what is her observation would be the best time to go forward on this. Uh, in addition, for the project, we have received our state wetlands permit, so that's very significant. And uh, there are ongoing meeting plannings, uh, planning meetings, excuse me, taking place. Um, one detail item, we had intended to have the purchase of the property so that the town took ownership, taken care of by uh, September 30th, but we know that's going to be after that deadline at this phase, so we have, um, Casey's been assisting, and we have been processing the extension paperwork with uh, Northern, Border, Northern Border Regional Commission, and uh, the indication there is uh, that's not a problem, and you know, we'll be able to do that, and it keeps everything on target in regards to uh, that that funding source to be used for the purchase of the property. I'm going to just keep going. If anybody has any questions, please let me know. Uh, back to the LVRT project. Eric did sign off on the grant paperwork last week for the, uh, it's the uh, section from Slap Hill uh, out toward Pumpkin Lane. Um, on that particular project, we do have uh, design work continuing. We're at a point now where uh, we will provide the um, 
designs uh, most likely next week, early next week. We'll push the design information over to USDA just to make sure that they're uh, in concurrence. There's uh, the correct detail shown and the information that's being prepared by Summit Engineering. Oh, I have one, two things on that while yeah. we're on it. Um, I did drop off the paperwork in that corner of the tet. <laughs> there. You have it? She's got it for right. the for the grant. And um, uh, one thing they told me when I went over to St. Johnsbury is that um, they send this notice to the um, congressional delegate delegation to give them a heads up in case they want to do anything. And so after we hear from them is when we would try to do a public announcement and um, maybe maybe we could get Doug or someone from the Gazette to do a write up on that at that point. That's good. The, um, on uh, another, uh, it's a separate project, but another project with the rail trail, um, VAST is leading this up. We're collaborating with Ken Brown on this. There's design, uh, it's nearly complete for the redecking and railings for bridges, what are referred to as 38 and 40, so these are out to the east. Uh, we're getting close to having those designs in order. I've indicated this in previous meetings. The intent on that project is that those uh, decks and railings are installed this year, so uh, that's a positive. Um, that's it on LVRT. The last thing here is uh, just ongoing coordination with the estate attorney for uh, the uh, former, uh, the, the patent property, which we refer to as the Cary Road property. We're still throw, sorting through the legal details of distributing some of the assets that are on the property. The town obviously owns the land, owns the buildings, but some of those assets are still being sorted out uh, in probate court. Uh, one uh, item that is resolved, so we should anticipate this being taken care of next week, the estate attorney um, has coordinated a purchase with a vendor of the double wide. That's the one you see as you're coming in bound before you hit the Dollar General on the right hand side. And uh, if all goes well, that will be going away this next week. Wow. So I've so, um, That is a step. Well, that's yeah. a step, but Go ahead. I'm ready to step it up. <laughs> I would like to relocate that trail prior to snowmobile season, which would mean stuff it over needs to be cleaned out of there. I mean, we've been patient. This property has been a thorn in our side for, well, from a trail perspective, for a decade. Is there a date decades. on the auction? We don't have that yet, but um, that is coming along. We should get indication on that pretty soon when that's going to be taking place as well. So I'd like to see some deadlines in auction. Well, on property cleaned up. We can't push probate very hard, can we? Well, we can find out some dates. I'm sure. I, I can mean, check. probate we've can't been, last been in communication, uh, right? But, no, so I, it, it, we know it's going to be her chat, right? Well, there's one timeline I am aware of, and that is that the uh, the uh, estate attorney did a posting in uh, mid-May. They have to give four months to any pre for any previous creditors to come forward. So I think by about September 15th, we should see things starting to move pretty quick. Well, but I can check, Danny. Well, that's what I'm saying, is yeah. when that ends, yep. we're not going to give them 12 months to clean that place up. No, yeah. up to this point. And I mean, all I'm yeah. concerned about is we either got to do some re more repair to that trail in the existing location, which... Set it over. But, it but over. even setting it over is still, isn't that still within what the town owned before? Well, it could be, but we got to move some... Yeah, there's still, the but there's stuff still in the way. It, there's stuff still in the way there. The trailer's still in the way. That's right. I mean, oh, the tra that tractor trailer is, is in, in, the, in the railroad right of way. Yeah. That fence is in the railroad. Yeah, everything yeah. that... I know that, the fence was, but everything there's stuff on the other side of the fence Mr. as well. Rob Lewis allowed them to take... I mean, Charlie Roque, we at one point we had that right yeah. away clear. I know. And it got cut in half. So it's not okay. and it's not so there's big stuff that needs to be moved. It's not a small yeah. And you think, are you anticipating some of the that, that no, stuff is going to go away with the auction? Or you think? No, I don't believe. I the intent is to auction those things. Yeah, but I can't. I, I don't know who would. Nobody's buying. I asked the auctioneer. Nobody buying garbage. Right, but I said, <laughs> what about the big <laughs> items? And he said, well, we'll try to auction them, but, but we don't know. But what happens if they don't go at auction? Is that then we're dealing with it. That is metal, some of that, right? Well, yeah, I'm just saying okay. that you when I, yes. I would You're like ready to, go. to be ready. Yes, I hear you. So when probate ends, there's no reason we can't have enough planning and foresight to start taking care of it immediately. Well, and because I, ideally it would yeah. be best if that trail got away from where it was and came down onto the path property, the edge of the path property, and just 
it's simple, it's clean, it's, they make it much more pleasant for everyone. Um, a better access to the road, to, to carry roads, just mm -hmm. safer. Just, so no all I'm saying is, the well, the well, yeah, we, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm just saying, start planning so when the, the action is final, because otherwise it's going to be February, again. So I'm saying. Um, and the question for you, does that mean that the Lamar Valley Rail bed is going to be open for snowmobiles straight through these tired of this winter? Yes. So we would have, I, I wouldn't think that people would want to advertise it as such. Well, I'm not 100% sure now that the Snowmobile Club knows that it's going to be usable, that they're not going to want to make it I'm a still trail. thinking there's still the narrow part where Tom had raw right. material and you smoothed it out, and that's pretty narrow through there. Yeah. I, I, but I'm once those bridges that, are... But once the bridges are done, that's the last big hurdle for it. Um, because it's going to be an issue, because I can tell you right now, as an avid snowmobile, there's going to be people riding. So people riding... They aren't going to be able to get a groomer through right, the way it is right now. Because of that one washout. Oh, actually, there's another one. There's that one, yeah, the one... Well, just that is actually going to be the big interruption, unless somebody wanted to... Fix it. If, oh, if the culvert dropped it, like they always <laughs> jump there. Yeah, jump there. That's true, it is banked. I'm just saying, these, are these are questions people are going to be asking. So, where are we at? So, we got to decide if we're going to... No, I'm just saying. Yeah, no. We gotta, that's going to be a big hurdle for anyone that wants to use it. Regardless, it sure is. You're, you're a pretty stout mountain biker, but you're going to have to get a good I run walk on through that. That's true. <laughs> I do. So it, yeah, I'm just. But with matter. the bridges, it's a lot safer. Well, once we get the bridges open, then it's going to be more appealing for people, for sure. Yeah. So we okay. still have the narrow part for snowmobiles. The things yeah. that would occur to me is that that narrow part. Um, I would agree. They're not grouping across the, that. And then the that part that got dug out. And I'm not positive. If I were, probably the groomer would be fine going across the cattle pass just before that. Yeah. And it's not a far drop if they fell in. It's only like no. four feet. But still. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that they're going to. I'm just these are questions that I've already been asked. Yeah. So I <laughs> so like I know get in touch with. That. All right. So just to move on, I'd like if you could put me yeah. in touch with yeah. whoever is yeah. on the. Um, so they can start thinking about it. on the local because if they're going to take over bridge yeah. owners or whatever. They, I'll yeah. do that. That'd be great. Just a caution. I mean, we're we're what we've been told is the deck and railings are going to be on. That's just you know. Hopefully they are. Right. If they're not. Well, I guess no, for me it's, it's, a, it's a solid. We got more work to do, but yeah. Anyway. Yeah, we again, do. But it's asked, possible I that was it's asked about it. So. Sort of. I mean, the it, if those two bridges go according to schedule, then the the Black Bridge one is going to look pretty. What rough. is going to be? Do you know offhand what is the fix going to be for Bailey? Because I'm the one that dug it out. Three foot culvert. Uh, so all we got to do is put a, a big a half. three foot culvert yeah. is what's on the it's design the from Doug. Yeah, three Perfect. foot culvert, and the same thing for the um, cat, the existing cattle cat cross. Take three it foot right culvert. Out. Take it out or stick take it, it out. Put a three foot culvert in there. So there'd be two of them. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it's not solid thick. Yes. So if a three foot culvert did fall in there and somebody filled it in the yeah. trail, that would we'd be ahead. Yep. We would be out of the gate. We would. So a three three foot culvert is probably twenty nine hundred dollars. Yeah. We do have to uh, just coordinate with the landowners, um, and uh, V Trans is involved with this just to uh, you know make sure uh, legally we can do that because it's a recognized cattle. For the cattle, I'm not the cattle. No, no, no that's, that's on my that's on my action item list. My snowmobile definitely jumped out. <laughs> okay. Can I jump back to yeah, the Cary Road property just to give Danny some feedback? The uh, the uh, the state attorney and the communications we've had up to this point is they were trying to be as aggressive as a possible, and it was you know up to this point it was uh, the way it's been framed is we're the town's going to be in a position so that the possessions are out of there and we can be dealing with it how we see fit toward the end of 19 is how it's been framed to date. I mean, if we have to get over there and move a tractor trailer that's not auctioned, we have a piece of equipment to do that. Right. And then figure out how we can distribute it. Yeah, you know. well, I would suggest as soon as we get possession, we hire all metals to come in and clean it up. We have a little bit budgeted now, so we could do that. So we, we got some options. Yeah, we'll have to see what's left. 
but that was a good idea. That's all I have for the manager's report. Great. Thank you. Uh, do you have? A, do you also have a road foreman report? Um, yeah. The, uh, so, uh, sorry, I didn't realize Tom wasn't going to be in here tonight. Um, uh, Tom did. Uh, he tweaked his knee a little bit on a response uh, the accident scene last week. So th that's one of the reasons I suspect he's uh, not involved with the meeting here tonight. Um, the uh, couple things I can report on the uh, the mowing the um, roadside mowing uh, with the. Is that Summit as well? Summit is complete, and the feedback I got from Tom is, you know, he was pretty happy with the product, and... Um, well, I, I'm not. You're not? No. Okay. Not at all. All right. Because? Because it's a terrible job. There's the intersections still got stuff thrown out of them. There's nothing was done in the village. I mowed Macville because it was one lane. <laughs> no. Okay. Danny, if you want to just give me the get me the notes on those areas you were concerned about, we can just make sure that you know we were aware. I, I didn't realize that there were any issues. Uh, Tom, mean, Tom gave me a positive you report. You couldn't see the sign of Macville. Say again. The end of, you couldn't see the sign stop sign or the yield sign at the end of Macville. Hmm. I mean, yeah. There's you know there's, there's no. Okay, so um, ongoing uh, ditch work. There has been some other uh, coal patch work that has been taking place. Uh, coal patch. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, uh, the Stratton uh, Road, uh, a culvert there on Stratton Road uh, had been uh, giving us trouble and uh, that was repaired um, this last week. There's been ongoing grading and uh, chloride application taking place um, and we're hopefully getting away from these patterns of these heavy rain events, but we do continue to experience them. But there has been quite a bit of uh, ditch work uh, taking place. Um, that's, I guess, what I would cover for um, public yeah, I works. I guess the other thing I should comment on is they are starting to move the sand and gravel. You know, they're starting is to haul the sand and gravel. Yeah. Crusher, yep. Oh, okay. Yep. And um, that's as much as I would report for uh, Tom's report. Are we keeping track of the hours that are spent on the reservoir project, roof project? Uh, for our, our crew doing the removals. Yeah. Um, I don't know that, I haven't asked for that, but I could tally that. It has not been significant. Uh, I know they have been working it in um, as we've gone along, Danny, but right. I, so to answer your question, the answer is no. Right. But well, I could probably tally it. I, you know, I wasn't, a, I believe the highway maintenance crew should be doing highway maintenance. Sure. Well, I spoke to Edward downtown one day and he said he felt like they were just fitting it in on days when they... Well, that's fine, but I'm weather just, wasn't I would good like to or something else. Because so. there's other things they could fit in, like yeah, yeah. weed whack and run stop signs, mm -hmm. so you can see them. Cut and brush, mowing back, cut and brush with loppers on, in the village where it's single lane on streets within the village. I mean, Tommy was the one that told us that his crew wasn't physically fit enough to cut brush. And I'm not sure they're physically fit enough then to be crawling in and out of the reservoir lugging stuff on a ladder. I'm not sure those were his words. I'm absolutely positive you said okay. right in that chair and told me that. All right. So, as you can tell, I'm really displeased with the fact that we're letting our roads grow in so you can't even drive down them. And I, and I really, I haven't gotten much support to, to take care of that problem. Oh, I think I, I'm definitely supportive of taking care of that. I need to, um, yeah. Anyway, move on. Moving on. Uh, police department report. All right, a lot going on this one. Um, let's see, we have uh, updated the video monitoring uh, at the PD. Uh, we had to replace the uh, recording box, kind of the brain of all the cameras. Um, and uh, so we replaced that. Um, by statute, we have to record certain investigations now. Certain interviews have to be recorded interviews. So um, we put in a, we, we put it in ourselves um, when we went into that building uh, in 2013. And the box stopped recording. And causing issues so uh, we were a new box I think it was 300 bucks something like that for the box we were able to use the same we were able to get a box from the same company so we were able to use the same cameras we didn't have to do anything anything there and replace the monitor with a bigger monitor so we could actually see it it was a little tiny monitor that you really had to squint to see the cameras so um, so we replaced that with a bigger monitor 
Um, we got that done. Uh, our conference room up there, we had originally designed that to be a um, conference center or uh, a room that we could use in any type of emergency uh, where we would have um, TV monitors uh, in the room that were set up for where we could plug in uh, laptop computers and mirror screens so that you know not everybody's hunched over a low laptop you can actually see it on those uh, so we were able to get those and get those uh, set up in there after however many years since 2013 we got those ordered and get those in um, Again, not a big expense. They were 100, 100 bucks a piece for the two of them. So again, not a big expense, but um, but it, we got it done. So that was uh, the big thing. So we, you know, any if the, if that needed to be a command center, uh, which is ideally what that building would be used for, since we have telephone, radio communication, you know, all that, all everything really we need computers, uh, except for a. Um, generator. That's what, I was um, ask. that's what we got to figure out next, but because uh, we don't, because power has gone out up there, and we lose everything when power goes well, out. Well, part so. of the reason we have this generator is because you guys are in the basement. Right, right, exactly. We, the police department, got the grant for that generator right. um, because they were there. Um, but obviously, we're not going to move it? that generator up there because it is still useful in this building as well. So we just need to. It it it'll probably be a project. It would be if it was the emergency command center. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what other use does it have? Well, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I mean, Depends if the car goes off in the day, they're not going to fire it up, keep working, right. they're going to go home. Right. Oh, it comes on <laughs> automatically. Really? Yeah. All right. 30 seconds. What, here? But I yeah. mean, still, that's... Yeah, it's automatic transfer. We stay right in business. But, but still, yeah. I mean, is that priority and versus having an emergency yeah, a, and, and that is in our emergency plan that your place is listed yeah. as our primary, yeah. right? So secondary is Lamoille Sheriff. Right. You know, and, and the sheriff, as far as Lamoille, is secondary because they do dispatch. Dispatching. But we're not all leaving Hardwick to go down there right. to sit there and set up a command center. So... Um, Ideally, it needs to be in town, and that would be the ideal location. Are um, your grant funds still available? No. no, I've looked for the past several <laughs> years, and those all dried up. They were through Homeland Security, is where they came uh -huh. came from. Um, those have all dried up. Anything that I've no, been able to well. research. And what's the cost of the journey? I don't know. Um, I haven't got to that point. How big to, is it? Actually, this one. Uh huh. It's been there for boy since early 2000s. Yeah, I'm sure the technology. So I'm not is sure. Much more compact one, but I would think we would need one at our very And that's case. definitely not my area of expertise as far, <laughs> as far as that goes. I know it turns on and even generates even power, and that's about it. <laughs> but, you know, at some point, we probably should look at putting a generator, you know, at that building. Um, I would think so. Be because the building's very priority. useful. We, I would think it'd be a priority, yeah. Yeah. I mean, those are the type of things that when right. you need it, and you don't have it. Right. And, and we found, you know, our, our phone systems go down. Right. Um, we don't have uh, radio communication radio. out of that building. Uh, we don't have compu computer technology out of that building when there's when there's no power. You know, luckily the village is generally pretty good and does not lose power for any length of time generally. Um, but in an emergency, who knows what the emergency right. is? So, uh, if we could generate our own power, it certainly would be useful uh, to do that. For budget time. I'd be yeah. surprised if there were not grant funds available. I would think, I mean, isn't that like a community facilities grant type of thing? Or I've looked, but it's not. But I have a lot of other things to do, so I, you know, so I haven't found them. But but it doesn't mean they're not out there. I just haven't haven't found anything. But it, it yeah, it's definitely something that is probably a priority that we should yeah. think of. Um, I know we have. Put money into you know capital fund for building improvements, things like that. But we do need to look at the roof, and that's yeah. what our focus was: was putting that money in. I think uh, look, you know, looking to roof that generator and for roofing. Yeah. So it's just something you know, definitely something we should yeah. consider, and as we move towards that, because everything else, you know, if there was a weather event, now we have uh, TVs, we have you know all the stuff up there that we can monitor it from there as well and in all of all of the um, the weather emergency weather alerts that come in come into my email and, and everything so uh, it's really a place that's kind of where you're going to operate out of um, you can't move everything there down here you know to set up it's just it's quite difficult to do that so uh, but we're getting there nothing happens overnight and yeah so right. um, 
we've also had uh, over the past month had radio I issues um, where we weren't able to transmit out of our station uh, with the radio so Burlington Communications came up they found that the um, antenna on West Hill was bad very bad um, and so they had to replace the antenna and water had gotten down into the antenna cable uh, which was not allowing they described how much input and how much output or whatever but they, they said basically it was not good um, so we thought we had to the issues resolved um, with that we found that within a day or two the base station uh, that we had has some issues with it so they came today they're gonna bring us back a spare radio until they can take that one and figure out what's going on with that radio so um, uh, let's see uh, we did have uh, over the uh, past week a week ago we had uh, uh, two crashes uh, fatal crashes one was a medical event but um, they're fatal crashes and we do have a, uh, a fire investigation also um, we were doing so right now got our hands full with some stuff that they were working with um, we and during this whole month we had several vacations of officers rotating vacations and so on that, that we had to work through as well. Um, let's see, I spoke with John Lange. Um, he had advised me that uh, within the last couple of days I spoke with him he, that he's expecting to be back to his duties in the next couple of weeks. So um, things have worked out for him. I so saw he, him on the street yesterday. Yeah, he did. He did come back and he did some tr some uh, parking enforcement and mm -hmm. and uh, said he should be able to be back in the next couple of weeks for okay. everything. So, so. So he can do the thing with for Alberta. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, unless something comes up and that changes, right. but that's yeah, yeah, that's what he expected so far. Um, We've ordered uh, a watch guard in-car camera system uh, for the, it'll be going into the new car whenever that gets here. Uh, we ordered that under uh, the Governor's Highway uh, funds. Uh, that pays 84% of the, of the cost of that camera. It's a $5,000 in-car camera. Um, the, we replaced one a couple years ago. I think it was a couple years ago uh, because we had no in-car cameras. Uh, the ones we had were the old VHS style, so you had to pop your trunk, pop a VHS in, and obviously that technology is antiquated. So, uh, so we were able to purchase one a couple years ago for one of the cars. Uh, this will put another one in uh, to another uh, one of the cars, and 84% of the cost was covered by the Governor's Highway Grant Program. So. Um, so that's coming. Uh, the bad news is that we did not receive uh, Governor's Highway funding for the coming year. Um, their funding was cut, and so they concentrated on what they called problem areas um, that they, I expect, maybe some went to state police, but um, but yeah, what they they said was you know they could identify as, as extreme problem areas so and uh, apparently not so yeah, apparently not. It's, it's it's it, according to them so right. um, you know and, and, and we we discussed that as well um, it, because it, it's gone up and down you know you've had when you do when you do a lot of enforcement efforts that tends to bring that that down I mean initially you'll have a lot of a lot of incidents or a lot of uh, traffic you know offenses that show up initially um, with that continued enforcement that should you know bring that down um, which is what happened uh, we've done it since 2000 11 I think when I when I brought that program back um, and so we've had we've, we've been I guess it's a success unfortunately when you can't show a lot of um, traffic uh, offenses and you know they're looking for DUIs and you know the major offenses uh, when you can't show a lot of that they're gonna put that funnel that money to somebody else who can show that so uh, especially when their budget was cut and that's that's pretty much what happened and they understood what I was saying you know by losing that funding it may bring back more offenses that we're having to deal with but um, they understood that but not much they can do so so um, that's, that's it okay. thank you we
Do we have our COPS, COPS, grant, COPS grant position filled? We technically have the COPS grant position filled. Um, the other that was when we hired Lucas. Right. Uh, that was the, the COPS grant. We do still have one open oh, position. But the COPS uh, grant is up and running. We're, yes. We're yep. Yep. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, it is. And we you have one open position. We have one open position right now. That is yeah. in what state that they're interviewing? Open, open. open. Hoping for we applications. Open I mean, it's, yeah, it's. Is it advertised? Uh, it has been advertised. Yeah. I talked with Sean actually this week about kind of re-upping yeah. everything but, yeah. again. Um, Nobody, St. Johnsbury has a ton of open positions. No, we have so seven, they're not we even have getting applications for seven it. Sheriff's so. So. I said I have contracts with seven sheriff's departments, and every single one of them, except for Orleans, yeah, has an opening. Has several openings. Wow. Yeah. In fact, it's, to the point like Memorial can't even provide service for yeah. us. State police included. Uh, they don't, uh, yeah, state police have several open positions yeah. that they can't fill. Yeah, it's just so it's silly. The applications just aren't coming in anymore. Um, yep. It's yeah. a hard job to get anybody to want to do right now. Right. Even 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 Chef Mark, who with all of his incentives yeah. can't fill all of his all can't fill the workload. Right. He's happy with it. You know, he's happy with the number he has. He would take more, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, he, he yeah. everyone's that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's just not a good time, I guess. It's, it you know it's certainly changed, and I've seen that change over my career. Um, it's like a roller coaster. You'll have times when. You have a lot they want to get in and they can't get in because there's a lot of, of applicants and there's other times when you can't get any applicants nobody right. wants to do it so it, it's same, same same thing's going to happen with nursing because yeah. right now in the next five years my mom's going to be starving for nurses yep so because of the flow of so we you know we're, we'll re-up the advertising and and see we've done a few ride-alongs of people that were interested you know and okay. and came and did a few ride-alongs um, so there's some interest. We're still plugging along yeah. and, and okay. trying to, you know, trying to fill. And you don't want to fill it with someone. We're not going to fill. You don't it want, to so right. speak. Right. That's not going to happen. So you still want to be selected. Right, but ultimately right. those hours are being filled at overtime. What's that? Ultimately those hours are being filled at overtime. Either overtime or part time. Also. Or part time. So yeah. yeah. Well, part time is yeah. better. Either way, it's, yeah. it's just a different expense. Yeah. 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 It doesn't leave a hole if that's, yeah. you know, there hasn't yeah. been any holes left. But. All right. Well, thanks for the update. Um, our zoning administrator, Kristen Leahy, is here to talk to us about um, uh, proposed uh, zoning bylaw updates. I really wasn't going to talk about the bylaw updates tonight. Okay. We're to transfer them to you from the Planning Commission. There's only two. One's a statutory requirement. One's a proposed zoning um, district boundary amendment. It's more to ask you to set a date for the hearing and so I can facilitate that. Um, you have all the information in front of you and rather than go through it now and then go through it again at the public hearing, it makes sense just to, to set a public hearing date. Unless, I mean, I'm happy to answer questions, but. Um, so, uh, do you have a proposed uh, public hearing date? September 5th would be the next week. That. That's your, thir that's your that's Thursday. Thursday. That would give enough time for the statutory requirements in the paper. We do want a motion for a public hearing for the zoning bylaws update on September 5th at 5.30? Yep. Yes. Did you say second? Yes. Second on that. So, all in favor of scheduling that. Um, Hearing, public hearing, please say aye. 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 All right. All right. Any opposed? I was just going to say, Chris, the next time. Carrie, thank you. Thank well, you for coming. With, yeah, <laughs> well, with everything else going on, I just wanted to make sure. Make sure it happens, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. I want to get this out of the way before we plan it Good job. All right. It'll be in the paper next week. All right, great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I told you five minutes. You did not. <laughs> Now, item number one, we are to the exciting Bridgman Roof Reservoir construction. Um, we had Jason Booth here because we have we actually are at a point where we have uh, um, we had bids for construction, and uh, you guys are recommending one of the bids over the other. Correct. <laughs> So, do you want to just give us the brief uh, overview of what this uh, is going to encompass? Sure. So, uh, so in, in all, we received two bids. Uh, 
the bid opening was held on August 8th. <coughs> Bids were from Spates Construction out of Derby, Vermont, and Menashe out of Morrisville. Uh, Spates' bid was for $364,000 and change. Menashe's total bid was $669,000 and change. Uh, <coughs> so we have gone through a bid analysis, and typically with a bid analysis, what we do is we check banking information, bonding information, check references on the apparent low bidder, and we go through another cost analysis for the project to update the total project cost with the low bid. <coughs> Spates has uh, come back as a responsive and responsible bidder, so the bonding checked out, no issues on bonding. Uh, banking seems to be in whole, and they don't have any issues for any red flags on the banking side. References were good as well. We checked a number of references. Uh, so they are responsive, responsible bidder, which is really checks the boxes for state approval and state concurrence with the recommendation to award. Uh, so we are recommending that the contract be awarded to space construction in the amount of three hundred and sixty four thousand dollars three hundred and sixty four thousand six hundred dollars um, which was more than the projected that's correct cost. so the, so the bid so the the, the bid the, the bid price was more than what was anticipated the construction bid price was more than what was anticipated um, and so from a total project perspective um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if I think the bid analysis was forwarded to everybody, but just to run through quick on the total project cost, um, right now with uh, the with the low bid of three hundred and sixty-four thousand six hundred dollars, carrying a five percent contingency of eighteen thousand two hundred and thirty. That's for any miscellaneous items that may come up during construction, uh, engineering costs, and then there's other costs that are. Uh, uh, legal costs, advertisement costs for, for bidding, um, uh, legal costs for bond vote, those types of those types of items. The total estimated project cost now lands at four hundred and forty nine thousand six hundred and ninety two dollars. So that's approximately twenty nine thousand dollars over what the bond authorization was for. Bond authorization is for four hundred and twenty thousand dollars, which included those items uh, as estimates. So, I guess there's, what we need to do at this point is um, those two pieces. So our recommendation is to award the space. Um, in addition to that, because we're over the bonding capacity of $420,000, uh, in order to move forward for the state, from the state's approval perspective, we need to show that the project is whole from a cost perspective. <clears throat> so there's a couple ways to go about that. Um, there's there's uh, reserve funding that Sean uh, has indicated is available to bridge that gap um, of approximately 29,000 over the bond authorization. The other alternative is <clears throat> that per state statute, uh, municipalities can increase a bond authorization one time by up to $75,000 by passing a resolution uh, without a public vote. The select board has the has the opportunity to do that. Um, so those are the two options to, at this point, show that the project in, for the state show that the project is whole from a, from a, from a funding perspective, and that allows you to move forward. Um, <clears throat> right now, in either of those scenarios, whether you commit to use uh, reserve funding or you. Uh, uh, the resolution to increase the bond capacity. You're not committing to necessarily use either or at this point. You're just saying we're, we're committing to at some point potentially needing to use that money. It's there if we need it to use it. Um, so once the project is done, we'll know what the loan, the actual loan value will be. What that means is construction will be done. We'll know what the construction cost is. We'll know if we've used any contingency. Uh, some of our engineering fees are not to exceed fees. So if we don't use all of the fee, it doesn't get billed out. So, so there's some potential in there for not using all of the funding. Um, so we don't necessarily know where we're going to end up with the final project cost. Uh, so this is really just to say right now this is a snapshot state. We have this money available to move forward. Um, and then once we get to the end of the project, we'll know what the total project is. Okay. I'm sorry, it's been done, but didn't we have 
uh, capital in the budget for the reservoir, or no? Yeah, that's what he's saying. We have the, we have money in there. So why wouldn't I say we just pay for it? I thought that there because we may not even have paid for it. Right. We, we may be under. It's only twenty nine thousand of a yeah. four hundred fifty thousand dollar project. Yeah, I guess I kind of agree, except that I thought we had guidance from Paul Giuliani that they it would look better if we increase the bond amount. But maybe I you can go either route. Mm -hmm. You can go either route. You can. You can either spend, you can commit on the front end, okay. or you can authorize to extend. So you have those two, there's those two scenarios. Well, what are the pros and cons of each of them? So the, the, the commitment to increase the bond capacity by $75,000, <coughs> um, it gives you the opportunity to use up to that amount. You may choose once you get into funding the project uh, uh, throughout construction and you start to pull in your loan money <coughs> that you don't need it or you choose not to use it or you can get to the end of the project and decide you're going to use your reserves to pay any overruns beyond the bond capacity. <coughs> So the terms on the loan are likely to be very good, correct? So you have a zero percent interest rate, <clears throat> and right now you, uh, the state has committed thirty percent subsidy, so principal loan forgiveness at the end of the once the loan once we get the final closure on the funding for the project, that final loan value will be reduced by thirty percent. So your principal forgiveness at the end of the project will decrease by thirty percent total project. If we extend the bond, total project. your total project will be reduced by. But if we, if we extend the bond, but if we pay out of our reserve, you don't discount. we don't we get don't that discount. discount. Right. So it doesn't make more sense. That changed my mind. Yeah. 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 I say we extend, extend the bond. And like you said previously, correct me if I'm wrong, but just making this decision tonight doesn't necessarily bind us to borrowing that money. We could decide to change our mind, say we're paying for part of this out of our capital. Now all this does is show that the project is whole. Yeah. You don't commit to any funding until the project is done and you know what your final loan value is. Yes. Yep. So, so actually, we had um, we have language from right, right from it Paul. probably needs to be specific. For it Paul. is very specific. Yeah. Okay, read it. No, nope. it's coming soon to a. We will give it to Sherry. Are you going to do it? All right. I know bond language is pretty specific. So we're going to resolve. Right. So I move that the select board acting pursuant to 24 VSA 4755A4 hereby increase the amount of such authorized indebtedness by 75% and $75,000. And this resolution shall take place immediately. Second. second. Yeah, oh, there's a competition for second. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, so be it so resolved. And that needs, so that'll get recorded in our minutes, and then the paper actually is signed by Alberta. And the only other thing is, um, I think we need a motion for, um, for the, con the con contractor and authorizing uh, town manager to execute the notice of intent to award. Yeah. Please. So, um, so those are two things. So, is everybody comfortable with? So moved. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's standard. We do that for everything. Right? Yeah, so but that's control. my job. <laughs> and we t uh, and the contractor is space, space because for, that's the right amount. amount. Three six. Yeah, so yes. you're, are you making a motion, yes. Danny? Yes. Yeah, did we award the, the, yes. the, did we award the Bridgman Hill? I'm looking. Uh, Contract. Item one. Oh, right here. Bridgman Hill Reservoir Roof Replacement be awarded to Space Construction Incorporated of Derby, Vermont for the contract amount of $364,600. All right. Um, second. Second. And discussion? I just want to throw out there that um, I previously had some emails and from your office and it sounded like um, even though this low bid came in above the anticipated bid, uh, your 
feeling or analysis was that we, there was nothing to be gained by trying to wait and bid again in the spring. And so, no, I, I really don't think you're going to gain anything right. other than you're, you're just going to lose time and you really want on, on having a, an empty reservoir. It's kind of odd. Not an odd group of just having those two independent contract. You know, those two contractors. It seems to me that it's really odd. It must be a really odd project. It's a specialty project. Yeah. Um, you know, for something like this, a typical GC wouldn't necessarily look at this because it's it's specialty work that a subcontractor would do. So what you're looking at are the subcontractors that would be looking at a, pro a larger project. Yeah. Um, so you're kind of narrowing your bidding pool, uh, and then you narrow it again because some of those contractors can't get bonded, uh, and they also can't comply with the state procurement requirements that go along with a project like this. So you're kind of narrowing things down the more you look at it, and it becomes more of a specialized project. Especially when the next bid is two hundred thousand dollars more. Three hundred thousand dollars more. You know what I'm saying? So it yeah. would tell me that we better. Get this thing built. <laughs> All right. Uh, just point of clarification. We just make sure we've also got in the motion notice uh, um, authorized town manager to execute. And we'll do that one next. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we could. Are we going to add it? it? I'll add it to my motion that we authorize the town manager to execute notice of intent, notice of intent to award the construction to award the construction bid. Yeah. That's why the so moves thing works really well for me. <laughs> So Sorry, there's a lot of detail on this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it all needs to be in there. I understand. Is there any estimate of when they can begin loading the building? We'll start to talk about schedule just yeah. a little bit right now. So now that we oh. have this, and we have the vote. Sorry. Yeah. All right. So uh, motion is to go with Spates and to authorize town manager to get that going. So all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. All right, everybody. All right. Yes. So actually, while you're in the motion, moving. Sorry. Just so that we're all clear and you guys are in the clear, I would recommend that you make a motion to elect Sean as the authorized representative for the project. Uh, what that all the, all the time. That's correct. And that's correct. So we have a, we're, we're looking to have a pre-construction meeting probably sometime next week. <clears throat> so at that meeting, we have contract documents, the, the notice to proceed award, yeah. notice of award, which we want Sean to execute yeah. just for ease. Right. It doesn't mean that yeah. you can't be there, but the, the state's going to look for an authorized representative, and, and he may already be, so but just to be on the safe side. Is authorized Sean to execute all agreements in the reservoir, Bridgeman Hill Reservoir Roof Project? Second. Get it done, Sean. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, so schedule-wise. Uh, sorry. Okay, that's three. everyone. Motion carries. Schedule-wise, now that we have this information, we're going to, we'll have to follow this up, get this to the state. They're, they'll do a quick turnaround on their concurrence. That's not going to hold us up scheduling a pre-construction meeting. So we're going to look to see if we can get states ready to have a pre-construction meeting next week. Their, their lead time, their, their timing on that is going to be getting their bonding in place. Typically, that's about two to three days to get bonding documents back from their bonding company. So it'll probably be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I know Sean's not necessarily available Thursday, but somewhere at the end of next week, we're going to look to get a pre-construction meeting so we can execute the contract. What that does is that releases them to start getting their POs out to their subcontractors to get materials coming because some of those may have a little bit of lead time. So uh, we're still on track to hopefully have them start get the ground get the ground running sometime in early September, first week in September timeframe. That's still the plan. We'll have better information on that at the pre-construction meeting next week once we have a schedule from the contractor. So that, that's where we are right now. Awesome. Thank you. Well, good job. Yeah. I'll get information to you tomorrow morning. Okay. Uh, I know the final um, minutes wouldn't be in place until they're signed off on, so do you just need the letter at uh, this phase? For I just need the letter. Okay. And, and one thing is that the state's going to need the resolution as well. Sean, I don't, I don't need that tomorrow for, for Roger Bergeron. I just need the letter for you for, for Roger. And then, and Alberta needs to see do the resolution. Yep. All right. 
So that's um, this is great to have this project moving ahead, and also to think that it might, it will probably will get completed this yeah, fall, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it'd be great. We'll get the, then we'll be back to two reservoirs. Yes. It's a very good thing we have the second one. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. I was talking to Sean earlier that the process for this reservoir roof replacement was started. Was already started. Already underway. Already underway. Already underway. Already underway. Already underway. Yeah. So we like need to get on and we're there. Thanks to Jason. Yeah. He had a meeting. Thank you very much. Jason had a meeting in Bennington this morning at 9 o'clock, so he left his home in St. Albans at 4.30 this morning, uh -huh. and now he's driving back to St. Albans. Wow. So thank you. Yeah, yeah thanks so much. Yeah. I'll be in touch tomorrow. That six, yeah. six digit sound we get you. Uh, next up is... Oh, note, before you start. Yes. That's why the state of Vermont wanted us to put that second reservoir in 20 years ago. <laughs> Because <laughs> they thought this day might come. They, they thought this day might come. Oh, that's it's really processed. Yeah, they didn't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what sometimes we cut the, we cut this one close because if that reservoir would have went down and we had that one. Right. I know they did. Wasn't uh, that uh, one's only been up? What, like a year? Year. Year and a half, maybe. It doesn't matter. Way too close. Even three years is way too. Three years is way too close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would have been kind of an emergency situation. Um, Thank you for all the activity on that. We're keeping things rolling, so I appreciate that, Bridgman. It's pretty aggressive. That's what we need. Schedule. Yeah, it's an aggressive schedule. So but that's what we need. It's great. Um, all right, next up is item three. Uh, select board to authorize town manager to execute a quick claim deed from the town of Hardwick to the town of Hardwick in regards to the former senior center parcel being merged. So this is what we need to do to get those. Oh, sorry, did I skip one? Yeah, yeah. We already, but we already, did, we already addressed it. No, we didn't. Did we not? Oh, excuse me. Sorry, Casey. Sorry, thank you. Let's back up to item number two, which is the bond uh, documents for the same project, the Bridgman Reservoir Roof Project. Which those two numbers have changed now. Yes, those numbers have changed because we just bumped it by seventy-five thousand. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, we can still do it, right? I don't know how to address this, and I hadn't thought about it. Give the documents that we have. Oh, we got signed. Um, we don't have to go back to them and get it for that much more. Well, we could have a special. No, because we got to come together. Sign. Can we just change the numbers on there and then sign? No, I don't think we want to do that. I don't. Can we just give you some time and we can get together while we're here at town? That's true. We could come. <laughs> special meeting. And not make. Because we have to redo our application and everything, right? I don't think we'd have to do that. Isn't it just like a contingency, like if we had to? My recommendation would be to move forward on it. If it's wrong, we table it. If we're wrong, if it's wrong, we do it again. Yes. Yeah, do it again okay. for... Yeah. I, because this is for the 420. But we just bumped it. It might be just a single document that needs to be added to that. that we bumped it. So I don't know. So yeah, Wait, we want to do this just in case we need Let's to do it. Let's do it. Should I ask Jason when he was here? He probably knows. And thanks. So let's go and go home. He's had a long day. Yeah. Let's so I make a motion that uh, we sign the Benjamin Hill Reservoir Bond for 420000 with 126000 principal for forgiveness. Principal forgiveness, excuse me. Second. And if it's not right? So we've already discussed that it may not be correct, but we're going to sign it and hope for the best. Right. If it's not, we can, we can redo it. Yeah. All right. So all in favor mm -hmm. signing the bond documents, please say aye. 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 Uh, it's everyone, uh, aye. Motion not carries. Right. We can meet first of the week. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Or whenever. Yeah. Just, pay, just pay for our people. We know what we want to do. Right on. We want to move it forward. Okay, so the first part is the lawn agreement. It's just the chair on that one, that bottom page. And then I have State Revolving Fund. And Alberta needs to sign too. Exhibit C is a general um, kind of planning purposes of how it's going to pay down. And that recovers all of you, please. Oh no, I'm not saying that. <laughs> Check you guys. I'm a pen. That one back. Here's that one. Thank you. Resolution. 
you okay? No, no, we just sent an email saying it wasn't going to show up. Oh. I don't know. Yeah. Didn't, we didn't get any. There's no photo the bag or anything. Although I did see Tom. I did see Tom. Is it Tom? The black Darius Phelps, right? No, other. Uh, Tom Gilbert. Yep. I did see him in crutches. He's in. He's on crutches. Too. Is he really? Well, they're doing their big show up there today, and they come through up yeah. the mountain. And poor guys out there. I've been out on there on crutches the you last two days. Him? I don't know. I was going to stop tonight. Yeah, there was see. stuff going on. Yeah, he had a crowd. He had a big crowd. That's good. Yeah, it was good. Are you waiting for that? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I'd feel his pain. Crutches are no good. Quite literally. <laughs> feel his pain. Well, next time, tell Aaron not to push the motorcycle That's over right. on you. He's a That's right. what I heard. I wasn't there. No, no, he went home. All right. I left him in good health. Yes. When Aaron left me, I was in perfectly good health. Casey, did we hit all those? I'm good. Okay. All set. So now we're going to roll on to item three, where I thought we were before, but we weren't. Um, so this is, uh, Sean's been working diligently to clean up the deeds and combine those parcels for the library, right? Yeah. That's essentially what's going well, on. Well, that's been ongoing. I just came in at the back end of the process. I, I, I know. <laughs> I move that we authorize the town manager to execute the quick claim deed from the town of Hardwick to the town of Hardwick in regards to the former senior center parcel being merged with the original library parcel. Second. Any questions, comments, discussion? <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. That was everyone. So that's a done deal now. Is that going to be done, Sean? Is that the With last that, piece? that, Bill will process it. Yep. Bill yep. files it. It's done. Really? Yes. Nice. Right. That's cool. That was progress. Quite a process. It took three years. <laughs> <laughs> We are fast. <laughs> All right, so next is item four, discussion of two vacancies on the Hazen Union School Board. So I question this because we, I didn't remember ever appointing anyone to a vacancy there before. Maybe. And I think what has happened, and so we had Bill double check that, that we do appoint, and we do. Well, I think that's probably why. But I think it's because we but don't. Steve's here. Oh. <laughs> I can't sit in the back and be quiet. So I think it's because um, because we no longer have a Hardwick Town School Board because oh, that is that now a union school. Yeah, no, that's right, right? So then the, the, the fallback, kind of the second fallback, is a select board to a point. And the, um, the school board, the Hazen board, has sent a list. You, there are two vacancies, is that correct? Two vacancies. Uh, Todd Delman Share resigned last uh, May. He's now the uh, manager of the building and grounds operations. Yeah. And uh, Kaylee uh, Galloway came. Uh, just barely uh, resigned because she's got uh, another position with the OSSU now, and it's an right. obvious conflict. So there are now two positions. And those are hard positions, right? Those were hard, hard, hard representatives, yes. Yeah. There are two remaining uh, Andrew Meyer and Amy Holloway. And so um, the, your board sent us a list of folks who, for, for our consideration, I think. Were those all folks who also expressed interest, and have you talked to them about it, or? Those names I asked the remaining uh, part of the board members to come up with some names, so you don't have to start from scratch yeah. one. And uh, they did. Uh, they talked to some of them uh, that are not on the list because they, they just could not swing it. Yeah. I think, I don't think they talked to everybody on that list, um, but those are what the remaining Carter representatives, those are the persons the Harvard representatives said would be good. Uh, the, I saw that. Did everybody see that list? Of, it's like yeah. six names, I think. Yeah. Roughly. Did everybody get that? If not, I can forward. That was here. So that was it. Forward. If you want me to uh, read the list. So uh, what I'm thinking, yeah, I be, you know, what I'm thinking actually. So normally, what we tend to do when we need to fill a vacancy is we advertise it, and the next meeting or whenever, like we said, it, so we ask people to just send in a short letter of interest to the town manager's office, and. Um, I guess I would 
be in favor of doing that same process unless there's a reason not yeah, to. So and we could reach out to these people, you know, we could just reach out to them directly and say, you know, just so you know, this is open, you, your well, name we should, came we up. Gotta, we gotta put it, I think it needs to be published. That's what I said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It needs to be published and public. We'll and certainly yeah, reach can. out to these people if they're interested. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the upside, I'm a little bit it's my just trying to read it to this and yeah, top. Read and and listen time. and think all at once is too much work. <laughs> too much work for me. So, uh, as long as that doesn't hamstring you guys, I mean, I think that's a process that's a little that's fair and open and. Yes, absolutely. Uh, in the last paragraph of that memo, we made clear that we hope that you include the list of people in the consideration yeah. of the, the ones that we want to right. come across. Yeah, because it doesn't pay to appoint someone who isn't going to yeah. actually do it. Well, I'll tell the uh, Harvard members that uh, the truth. that uh, the select board will appoint the uh, vacant positions, and uh, I'll leave it up to the Harvard members to contact these people and maybe uh, ask them to do push. proactively yeah. contact them. There's one person who I interest. think is on your list, but Patrick Kane did already send me an email uh, interest in it and wanted to know what the process was. So we have one. Hey, I'll tell him we're going to open it and um, yeah, everybody and can have it put in a letter of interest. But I know at least one of those manager. people. Correct. So our, our office will take care of posting an ad for that. Great. Hey, next week's paper and have a letter to Sean of interest. So Maybe. Maybe. For him. Yeah. Yeah. So for yeah. let me just think through. Through though, um, so if we, I'm just one thinking about the it's timeline. Time, yeah. What's the timing? So if we post it, we have to give people a little while to re reply. Okay. Well, we do have three weeks between now and our next meeting. So, so um, if it goes out, we should be able to do it at the next if meeting. I, if it okay. Stay next Wednesday, which is the 21st. Okay. Um, and we ask them to have their responses by the 30th. And then we get them out to you in like on the third or fourth before the meeting, and then we meet on the fifth. Yep. Is that adequate? I think so. Like, Fine. Yeah. Exactly. Like about so a week and a half business days. Yep. That sounds okay. good. And just sounds yeah, just put in yeah yeah we can do an executive session at the end. <laughs> Okay. A point. Um, you know what I really miss? What do you miss? Three months count. I looked over there several times. I know. I, we used to have the big red and white, you know, three month calendars there. So when we have these discussions, I, like, like, I keep looking. Yeah. Okay. I know. I keep looking too. <laughs> and I don't have my phone and all that. But um, yeah. So sounds like that'd be September fifth, as Kristen just pointed out to me, is our next meeting. So. Um, we Is that an okay date for an answer? Uh, yes, and uh, in fact, uh, I kind of slowed you down by not telling you about Todd's uh, resignation until now. Mm -hmm. it, it was the end of the year. So he took Jeff? Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's good. Yes. Good. Yes. I'm glad none of these people quit sort of... No. I've had enough of this. I quit. No. no. You know, that they all moved to Southwest. It's the opposite. I've been on the select board and the planning commission and all kinds of boards around here. And I have to tell you, this is the best board I've ever been on, uh, especially in the recent years because it has eight independent thinkers. And, so uh, be sure to put that in the advertisement that this is the best board <laughs> you've ever been on and yes. you want to be part no, of I it. I totally understand what you're saying. <laughs> we, exactly. we can operate that yeah. way. Yeah. We're all pretty independent thinkers. Yeah. <laughs> but we also try to move forward. We also try to move forward and, and understand what, what the situation had to deal with it, even though it's likely we don't develop agree on how to be done. Not on everything, right. So, yeah. Well, thank you very much for bringing this to us. Um, so just to be clear, so to be yeah, clear this process is, was, is changed because of the new education, whatever we have now. So looking at the statute, if you if you look in the section for the union school districts, it says that if there's a vacancy, then the town school district would have, this town school board, if there is one, right. would appoint to the vacancy. Okay, and I guess, so, that, so the elementary school board would have normally... It would have, if it still existed. So, it, forgive me because I didn't pay attention to this because I had too much other things to worry about. So now there's still, is there an 
elementary union school yes, board the, and it's, a, it's OS, and a Hayes SUN school board or something. So there's still two. Yep. Yeah. I don't okay. think there's, there's a Hayes school board anymore. Uh, there's there's a unified elementary school board. Yeah. And Hazen, you're on the And Hazen is of course a joint collaboration. Right. Uh, All right. But, but there's no no there's I don't think there's a Woodbury school board either. I mean, we right. got disappeared. Yeah. Uh, after the merger. Yeah. So uh, if we had this situation with uh, a Woodbury representative. We'd be, I think the proper course would be to go to the Woodbury Select Board. Select board. Yeah. Yes, I think that's the thing. But before, we went to the school board. Right? Yeah. Which yeah. why it's never done before. Which, you know, it makes sense to me. Yeah. Believe it or not. So for the sake of the people watching at home and watching the tape, would you introduce yourself? No, oh, yeah, I should have asked. Hi. <laughs> I'm Steve Freyhoff. Stay civil. <laughs> <laughs> I'm chair, the current chair of the Hazen Union uh, School Board. And I've come here tonight to ask the select board to uh, fill two vacancies on the school board that were uh, the vacancies were created by resignations from Hardwick representatives. And the board's going to do that. And you should tell them if you're interested. Yes. There you go. First advertisement right there. Right. Yes. Thank you. Ah. Oh. Phone's ringing. Okay. All right. As they say in school, am I excused? You are. Thank you. See you later. Thank you, Steve. All right. Uh, next up is the local emergency management plan. I thought we already adopted this. Am I just dreaming? Well, we did until we found out we didn't have a generator. So what happened on this is there was a, uh, I updated I think about a month back, that uh, there was a there was a new template that yeah. was released for this operational year. But I thought we did it again since the new template. No. We didn't? No, we did not. So I authorized, uh, I make a motion that we adopt the 2019 Local Emergency Management Plan Adoption Plan. Second. There you go. Okay, so and for uh, we got a form that I'll have you sign, Eric. Yeah. You do that, and, and the then uh, what we'll do is I we do. share it with uh, NBDA. Yeah. And share. Uh, what we do then is get it uploaded to the uh, pertinent uh, Vermont Emergency yeah. Management site, and uh, then we're all uh, ship shape. And uh, thanks to Tom this. and Aaron and Casey for their help um, processing the draft that I sent to the select board prior uh, yeah. this week. We had just a couple of other edits on some name changes and things like this, so I appreciate their input. So we get everything in order. Good. So um, all in favor of adopting the, the new plan, please say aye. 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 Uh, that's everyone, so motion carries. Um, no, that's coming not. back at you. And now we are... Oh, so look, this is item six. This is the... Sell the damn jump. Give it away. Give it away. Give it away. Give it away. Okay. I'm fine to vote for it, but I'd, it seems like you could have done it without us. But. Well, I think well, we could have done it without you, too. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> Here we are. Th things tend to get away from us. Yes, you ask the question, and then it's out there. And yeah. then so I make a motion to uh, authorize the distribution of the older fire department hose cart. We're going to refer to it from wherever from now on as hose cart number one. It's the Hardwick um, Hose Card. Huh? It's Hard the Hardwick Hose Card. The Hardwick Hose Card. The Hardwick Hose Card. Right. Let's get rid of it. How about that? The, yeah. For the Historical Society. Because we have somebody who wants it, it right? They, somebody that will take it. Yes. There's a collector who has researched Historian. it, and when I suggested that it would be a, we would like to give it to him, he was sort of like... <sighs> Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, All right, so Danny's made a motion. The for that thing. Second. That the Historical Society is going to... I got about two acres out of back of my house. He can come down and collect some stuff. <laughs> All right. All in favor of authorizing the distribution of the Hardwick Fire Department host card, please say aye. 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 Opposed. So motion I carries. I see the back side of the depot, and she's starting to look pretty sharp over there. Thank you. I haven't seen it since I was I go see it. I start to. I mean, I see yeah. the color. And okay. It's about to be done, but it's I haven't been by. It's going to look nice. Uh, Select board, next is item seven, select board to review and approve a name change on existing second class liquor license in Alberta. Send us a note and also answer my my 
constant question, which is, do we have any issues? And she said, no. Yeah. It's not in here, though. Is it? Who is it for? Is it? It's uh, for uh, DNL, but they're DBA DNL, right? Correct. It's, um, so they were KS Enterprises doing business as DNL Beverage. They're going to be GSB LLC doing business as DNL Beverage. That's the startup, right? So what is better? Correct. Yeah. Oh, yeah. what's yeah. that? What's that hasn't been M &M. for a long time yet. Yeah. Oh, but it was. Wasn't hasn't it? It's been used to be. for it's some been time. M and M's. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Number of years. All right. So that's yeah. that one. I uh, make a motion that we authorize the name change of the existing second class liquor license yes. for this one. All for business doing business yes. as DNL. Mm -hmm. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Right, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Any opposed? Can I stop yeah, reading? I, I signed it. Motion carries. That was everyone. Thank you. Um, any select board reports? I have two. Uh, two? Oh, that's more than the, your law. Uh, pedestrian and traffic safety task force has had its has gone to the I went planning as commission. a representative to yeah. the planning commission Great. they're on board we're um, actively pursuing Doug what's his last name? Doug Morton? Yeah. Doug Morton no, from right? MBDA he's the transportation guy yep. um, he's sounds like he's going to come make a, a visit with us on Friday February 13th and we're going to September. So I'm sorry. Yeah, so February. What? Why? <laughs> September. Could be chilly. 13th. Friday the 13th. Valentine's. Yeah. So um, to just kind of assess, you know, take a look at the 2009 assessment, take a look at what's happening now, and awesome. help us uh, get some focus points. Um, and we're going to meet at the new coffee shop so we can sit and watch the traffic. That's yeah. why it's called front bit. seat coffee. Yeah. Yeah. We got front seat to that intersection. Indeed. You don't want to take um, away the main attraction. You think so? When somebody comes well up through there, other, it's great. <laughs> other little tidbits. Which has happened. Are, um, I spoke yeah. to Lynn um, at the village restaurant, yeah. and she gave me some good. Um, feedback on the speed bumps and she said that oh. she felt like they were pretty effective are they that not people as are slowing as the, down as and the construction company so i have well there's that <laughs> but even in the morning she said yeah. even in the morning when there isn't anybody parked and you could easily go around them it's still he, there's less traffic going through there well the visual so, so i have not tried to straddle in yet <laughs> just for the record. i still think my truck will but um, just the visual when you when you glance down there Says you see that yeah. says that is not, just you, if you got any kind of gray matter upstairs, it tells you that that is not a quicker route. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's all that does. It really, you yeah. know, so when I look at it, I see those now. Good. It's like, yeah, that's great. Your brain tells you not to, yeah. you know, instead of saying, oh, that's a wide open racetrack, you know. Yeah. So. Oh, um, well, maybe that's it. Yeah. I think if nothing else, should there you feel ago. the same way that it? Yeah. It. I mean. It yeah. doesn't take someone very, you know, we should have done logical to, under, should to think that there. going across them is going to make it quicker right. and quicker than that. Yeah. I have there seen cars space. backing out, and I believe it does cause a great deal of heartburn for those people because one tire has to go, you know, because it's it is such funky. a short space. Yeah. When you back out of them, it feels it, weird. It feels weird. I'm yeah. sure some people are uncomfortable yeah. with that feeling. It probably feels a little like going into that. Um, you know, on the street and you park in those spots. Right. right. <laughs> Your tire goes down. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying. Other than that, it's yeah. a, it's just yeah. a yeah. Like, this oh, is the thing. What am I? That's good. It seems like it's helped so far. That's good. Um, so that's that. And then um, a sad news from the townhouse is that we did not receive the cultural facilities grant for the um, for, for the, the fire really? escapes. So we're it, uh, we're waiting for notes from yeah. the arts council. Yeah. Um, they just had a lot of good round, applicants, good and okay. it's competitive. And it wasn't your round. So we're gonna try to tighten up our thing. Um, it's not. Um, I've spoken to the to representative from the division, and it's not appropriate for that their October historic um, preservation mm -hmm. application, but um, I'm looking for some other possibilities. Um, and if, yeah, and then we'll try again next year, but. Um, It'd be really nice to get that funded. It would because those uh, yeah. fire escapes are not yeah. good. 
and they're not getting any better. So no, that's no, that. Those are again something that when you need them, you need them to work well. <laughs> yeah, and they. Yeah. Like, yeah. And sadly, right. they may not. You know, but you don't want to find a failure in the prior Yeah. yeah. And there's a fire. Right. But otherwise, the season has gone well, and it's been nice to have those new screens and on the windows. And yeah. the chamber players are having their final concert of the season tonight. Already, the library has a fundraiser uh, concert this Saturday, oh, and yeah. so there's stuff going on. Great. That's all I got. Liz, can you give us a, just a brief update on the digging underneath the? the depot and how that's going? Uh, the foundation is finished. It is? It is. Um, so we are waiting until after the chamber players have finished their season and we have cleaned out all the stuff that's in the back room. Um, and roughly first week of September, we're going to start constructing the climate controlled storage area for the historic records of this town. Hmm. Um, some of that stuff is the house car. We just cleared out some space. We just yeah. cleared out some space right now. I just need to have you know two people to move a filing cabinet so we can roll that thing out on onto his onto his truck. Um, and the painting is going well. We we authorize that it be painted and that's going well, so it's it's going to be right spiffy. And this is not something the select board has had anything to do with, but I want to announce to the public that the Historical Society, using the money by a private donor, has sent Hardwick Gazettes dating from 1890 through 1919 to be microfilmed and digitized. That until these films, this stuff comes back, the only place you can read Hardwick Gazettes is in Hardwick. And once, and they're on high acid paper, which is burning itself up and in a hundred years will be gone. But with microfilm located at the state archives, and these digital versions located on the state library's digital library collection, they will be available to anybody, anywhere. And I don't know how long the digital versions are going to last. There's no telling with digital. But I know the microfilm will be available for hundreds of years, literally. We know that about microfilm. Uh, so Hardwick's history in its, in the time when Hardwick when Hardwick's history is different from any other town in the area, is suddenly going to be available in a way it has never been. Cool. Pretty excited about that, aren't you? I, I can tell really just by the tone in your voice. It's like, if I do God, it's like me seeing else. a new excavator, man. It's like, yeah. <laughs> if I do nothing else ever for Hardwick's history, having having finally gotten this project I together, makes I, well, I will go to we my We should great thank happy. the donor because I'm sure this is not a cheap endeavor. This is a ten thousand dollar donation. Yeah, you know, thank you. Just shipping those, and thank you to the to the group who helped me pack them because packing was a major a major trip. Um, wrap each volume in craft paper. Wrap that in bubble wrap. Wrap that in cardboard. Put that in a box full of popcorns so that these things can get to Wisconsin in the condition that they left Hardwick. Um, that was a morning's work. Um, so, and it cost $500 to get them from UPS and Stowe to, and it'll cost $500 to get the hard copies back, which we will. We will get the hard copies we back. We will get the hard copies back. They'll go into climate back. control area over there. Yes. Yeah. That's the idea. But they're still going to be on your acid paper. Well, but they'll yes. be, I mean, <laughs> they'll, they'll, last they'll, longer. Longer. they'll last longer than if they're sitting in a box in the corner of the depot. Exactly. Hot, cold, Where it's cold. getting yeah. you know, below zero and in the winter the, and you know, 95 in the summer. So yeah. it's good it's job. A good yeah, thing. It's good stuff. Thank Laugh you. if you want, but your your history is in here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm in some of that history. <laughs> Not that. No, 1990. Oh, come on. No, I'm, I'm no. in the new wave stuff. All right, okay. 
Nobody cares about me yet. <laughs> No. But we did not know, I mean, I didn't know that these 1890 and 1891 papers existed until last week and found them quite by accident and thought, wow, 1891 was when the village separated from the town or went, you know, became mm -hmm. its own independent entity. Yeah. And now we can understand what that conversation was. 1890 was when the Granite Union workers voted to unionize and the owners agreed to accept it. And now we can know what that conversation was about. Those two years were really important in Hardwick history and we had no sources for them and now we do. That's cool. Sorry, I got excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other select board reports? Any new business? Any old business? Did you think of that? No. <laughs> It'll come back. Yeah, someday. All right, well, we're going to adjourn. Thank you, everyone. And we're still 10 minutes early. Still 15 doing minutes okay. Early. That was a